This is a Delauve nozzle. It consists of a converging and diverging section. The converging section gets narrower and the diverging section gets wider. The lavel nozzles are necessary to reach supersonic speeds. Fuel and oxidizer are mixed and ignited in the combustion chamber. Once they produce combustion, the pressure, temperature, and velocity of the molecules increases dramatically. These gas molecules are ejected outward through the nozzle at high speeds, causing motion in the opposite direction. This motion is due to thrust. As the gas molecules travel from the combustion chamber to the throat to the nozzle exit, the velocity of these gases increases. In order to understand why the velocity increases, it is necessary to understand the concept of the conservation of volumetric flow. Imagine a pipe filled with water. Notice that the cross-sectional area at the top of the pipe is greater than the cross-sectional area at the bottom. Cross-sectional area is what you see when you slice the pipe in half and look inside of it. At the top, you'll see a wide circle, while at the bottom, you'll see a narrower circle. Imagine now that the water is pushed out of the pipe. We expect the volume of water that flows out to be equal to the amount of water that's missing from the tank. Imagine the volume is being contained in imaginary cylinders. What you'll notice is that while the volumes are the same, their shapes of these cylinders is a little different. Because the cross-sectional area at the bottom of the pipe is less than that at the top, if you want to fit the same amount of water, you'll have to increase the length of the imaginary cylinder enclosing the water. For this reason, the length of the cylinder at the bottom is greater than the length of the cylinder at the top. So if you have a molecule at the very top of the pipe, after the water stops flowing out, it'll travel a distance d1, but a molecule at the bottom of the pipe will travel a distance d2 that is greater than d1, since the, ima the imaginary cylinder containing the water that flowed out is longer than the one at the very top of the pipe. Since the water at the top of the pipe is depleted at the same time that the water at the bottom flows out, the times during which these two molecules travel is the same. Since velocity equals distance over time, and time is equal in both cases, the velocity of the molecule at the bottom of the pipe is greater than the molecule at the very top, since d2 is greater than d1, meaning that the molecule at the bottom traveled a greater distance than the molecule at the top during the same amount of time. This concept applies to our de Laval nozzle. Since the cross-sectional area in the chamber is larger than the cross-sectional area at the throat, the length of the imaginary cylinder at the throat must be greater than the length of the imaginary cylinder in the chamber. Now imagine two molecules in the red section. They are at opposite ends of the red cylinder, one on top and one on the bottom. They travel from the red section in the combustion chamber to the blue section in the throat. Remember that the volume of the red section is the same as the volume of the blue section. The molecules end up in the same position on the cylinders as they started. One is at the top of the blue cylinder, and one is at the bottom. But notice that the distance between them has changed. Clearly, the leading molecule has a larger velocity than the one behind it, because it was able to travel more distance in the same amount of time. This can be modeled by the volumetric flow rate equation. This states that the amount of volume that flows through any section in the pipe must be the same. So as the cross-sectional area of the volume decreases, the volume must increase. It's important to note that in sonic and supersonic flow, the velocity at the throat is always equal to the speed of sound. But what happens in the diverging section of the nozzle? You might be thinking that since the cross-sectional area increases after the throat, then the velocity must then decrease as well. This is not the case. The velocity keeps increasing because the molecules have accumulated a lot of thermal energy throughout combustion. Once the molecule passes the throat, they are finally free to expand and they convert this thermal energy into kinetic energy thus speeding up.